people say, oh, why should I buy Alaskan salmon? Whether your pocketbook says this or says that, it, you're really supporting a management system that says we approve of sustainable management, sustainable not just in economics but environment. I hope that your grandkids still get to eat Alaskan salmon. As a consumer buying salmon, it's often hard to know the real differences between wild salmon and farm salmon. So we came here to Juneau, Alaska to find out how wild Alaskan salmon is really caught and processed. The life cycle of a salmon begins in fresh water, where they spawn and then incubate for a period of months. They head out to sea for three to five years, and then depending on which of Alaska's five species they are, king, sockeye, coho, chums, or pinks, they start coming back between the spring and early fall. Commercial fishermen are heavily regulated in where and when they can catch salmon. In the king season time, we'll only get one or two day openings. During the sockeye season, when we're getting a lot more fish, we'll uh, be able to fish for three to four days. Um, a lot of people in the lower 48 probably think, well, don't you want to catch all the fish? No, we don't want to catch all the fish. We want them to reproduce. We want the fish to escape. Once the fish are caught, it's the handling that can further differentiate the quality. Processing is affected by supplier. Higher end suppliers pride themselves on having the fish on a plane and onto your plate within 24 hours. For the majority, since it's seasonal, most year-round salmon is frozen. But since most of the salmon processing is done right when the fish come off the boat within Alaska, they're handled and frozen immediately to maintain their quality. Proper freezing is wonderful. Freezing has changed everything. The, the idea that people go, oh, frozen fish, <gasps> they don't know what they're talking about. If you handle your fish properly and freeze it properly, it tastes better than most fresh fish out there. There's really nothing wrong with the frozen fish at all as long as it's handled properly. Um, and you know, most of the distributors and fishermen are, are taking more and more care every year in their fish because they know that having a superior product that's well handled and well taken care of is, is gonna bring a higher price. Beyond the catch laws, Alaska has implemented further measures to ensure population stability. Because extreme weather can impact the numbers of salmon, Alaska has salmon hatcheries that supplement the number of salmon in the wild. What we look at is trying to supplement the, the peaks and valleys, produce a, a, a stable lower level. There is a genetics policy within the state of Alaska that we have to follow. And one of the keys is said that stock should ideally, ideally be within 50 miles of, uh, of where you're going to locate your hatchery. The hatcheries start with the eggs from local fish. They go into incubators in August, are reared and then released in March. These hatchery salmon are still considered wild for consumers because most of their life and all of their ocean life is in the wild. So they come back at about four kilos. So they go from, say, four grams to four kilos. That's several orders of magnitude growth uh, out um, eating wild, uh, all wild products and competing in the wild with, with the with all the other wild fish. Depending on the year, usually around 30% of the overall salmon catch is from hatcheries. While sustainability is important to consumers, there'd be much less advantage without the actual qualitative differences. While the handling also affects the quality, the actual life cycle of a wild salmon wholly differentiates it from farm salmon. A farm salmon is held captive its entire life. Um, it's in a net pen from, in a sense, from the point they've come out of the incubators to the point it goes to the processing plant. If you're actively avoiding a predator, your meat's firm, you're eating natural food out there, and the, the texture is just a lot more firm. Any wild salmon is really superior, but Alaska's got the quantity. You can tell the color and the flavor is going to be there. The texture of the meat is going to be firmer, it's going to be fresher looking. It's just going to taste fresher tastes like the ocean. <laughs>